two, three. In my recent video, I have discussed hybrid cars. Well, today it's time to unwrap electric cars. But because the subject is so extensive, in this video, I'm going to focus on batteries, but especially on charging. In my educational lab, I'm using Polestar 2, which I have reviewed last year. Great car, very unique. You can't mistake it for another car. And this paint color looks rather smart. Right, let's get straight into it. BEV, battery electric vehicles, EV, short name. Electric cars use electricity, which has been generated externally. Some of it is renewable and clean, some of it is not, because it comes from burning coal. Now you will have some EV fanatics refusing to admit it. Why? This is certainly not a path to sustainability, because denial, is not a happy place to be. We all know how this ends. So let's talk electric cars and let's talk facts. So it's quite simple. You charge the car, electricity is then stored inside the battery pack, which is located under the car's floor to lower the sense of gravity, in turn, improve your stability so that you don't roll on a twisty road. Battery packs vary in size and are measured in kilowatt hours, which essentially means how much energy you can consume over one hour before you run out of electric juice. Now, battery pack sizes start from about 20 kilowatt hours in the likes of a Renault Twingo, Fiat 500, so generally speaking, small compact cars, to a whopping 120 in Mercedes EQS SUV. But a healthy average is somewhere between 70 to 80. Now this particular car has got a battery of 82 kilowatt hours. Now 82 is a listed figure, because what's usable is actually 78, 79, the other bit is battery reserve, something to protect your battery. And in some cases, you probably might be able to scrap the barrel a little bit when shit hits the fan and you are running out of range. But hey, I'm a woman. I take no responsibility for my advice. There are three ways to charge an electric car. A regular wall socket at home using a plug like this, a wall box installed at home, and a public charger. Well, I suppose there's also the fourth one, a rescue truck with a mobile charger. In case you've listened to my previous advice and you've pushed it just a little bit too far. Now, charging at home using a regular wall socket is the slowest, one to two kilowatts, which means for an average battery size, it'll take you about three to four dice. Wall boxes cost somewhere between two to 600 euros dollars to install. Many brands are offering very good deals and the speed here starts from 7.4 kilowatts all the way to 22. Now with the slower wall box, it'll take you about 12 hours to charge, but with the quicker one, four to five. Now, depending on the country you live in, generally speaking, charging at home is still the cheapest. <music> Everyone can have a charger at home. Street parking, building limitations, a grumpy landlord. So what then? Well, you rely on public chargers, which start from a home wall box style, seven kilowatts, to a very powerful rapid chargers up to 350 kilowatts. And you're probably thinking, wow, one kilowatt at home versus 350, that's amazing. It is, so is the price. So just to give an idea, in France, it costs 22 cents per kilowatt to charge your electric car at home. 79 cents 
on the motorway using rapid charges. That's bad. But just the other day, I was charging a car in Italy by the beach using a fast charger and I have paid a whopping 93 cents. I'm sorry, but I consider this nothing but an utter and absolute abuse. And moral of the story is, try to charge at home as much as you can. And when you're traveling, a lot of hotels offer free charging if you purchase a parking spot, which is super, super handy and very cheap. To prolong the life of your battery, you should really be charging it up to 80%. This is 100%. Only when you're traveling or you don't have a quick access to a charger, sure, charge it fully. But bear in mind that batteries in electric cars do degrade over time, just like they do in our mobile phones. To give you an idea, you will lose anywhere between 10 to 20% of its capacity over a couple of years. Now, EV fanatics will tell you it's not true. You only lose a little bit. Well, truth be told, we just don't have enough data to tell you how it really is. We have all these new electric cars coming in, all these new batteries. It's just pure statistics. And what do you need for statistics? Well, time. It also depends how kind and loving you are to your battery, or perhaps you are ruthless. Now you see, storing and charging your car in freezing temperatures, in hot temperatures, rapid charging, charging to 100%, all these behaviors do degrade your battery much faster. Now, the best environment is, of course, mild climates, slow charging up to 80%, ideal world and all that jazz. But luckily, they are working on solid state batteries as we speak. And if they get it right, I reckon it will be a true breakthrough. <laughs> to this I don't know how to act don't know how to adapt to this situation now you to this no I'm not better let myself so chargers have a maximum charging speed but so do cars simple subject it is not a charging cap in a car essentially means how much power it can receive maximum Polestar 2 can receive 205 kilowatts, which is very good, but it is also becoming standard across the industry. Then again, you've got smaller cars, the likes of Fiat 500e, got a mighty attacking Italians today, with a charging cap of only 50 kilowatts. So of course, the higher the number, the faster you can charge the car, generally speaking. But you see, top charging figure is not like top speed in a car, where you can really pump it until you run out of fuel or electricity. It's not so simple. Now you can reach this charging ceiling, especially when low on charge, but then again, I have arrived here with 45% charge, so below half. This charger is 120 kilowatts. It's 22 degrees January in the south of France, glorious. And the charging speed is below 70 kilowatts. Why? The more charge you have in your battery, the slower the charging. Pretty much all electric cars, once they reach 80% charge, the charging speed slows down significantly. If you think about it, it's a pretty clever design. They want to encourage you to charge to 80%, not to 100%. And I'm talking, you could be sitting here and pumping 200, 250 kilowatts. And once you reach that magic number of 80%, it's like, Piano falling over the 20th floor, boom! And just like that, you are a snail. And as if it wasn't complex enough, freezing temperatures don't just affect your range and the overall life of your battery, they also affect the charging speed. I've been driving this car three hours. It was actually quite warm, two, three degrees Celsius, above zero, not below zero. I was rather low on charge, 5%. I like to push it, what can I say? There was a rapid charge on the motorway, 350 kilowatts, I thought, goody. 205 kilowatts charging cap, I thought this relationship has got some potential. But oh no, I arrived and for the first 15 minutes, my charging speed was only 60 kilowatts. That's because the battery was cold. And by the way, this is actually very normal. 
time goes by and yet I wonder Are you and me still the same? Are you still loving the... And when it comes to charging speed, other factors that will drag you down are simply other people. Just like with everything in life, other people charging at the same time at the public charger that is and sometimes it's just a shitty charger it promises you heaven and it gives you hell and all of this just reinforces my previous advice if you can especially in low temperatures both store and charge your car at home in a garage or underground car park if you can't well just bear in mind that it will cost you more money time and most likely nerves When it comes to charging, moral of the story is what you really want is a solid charging speed average. From my personal experience, and I have driven well over 60 electric cars over the last couple of years, has actually been Genesis Electrified GV70, Hyundai Ioniq 5, Ioniq 6, Audi RS e-tron GT has been absolutely phenomenal when it comes to charging and battery. My worst experience has been with Mercedes EQA, EQB, BMW iX3, sorry BMW. Now generally speaking, just based on my personal experience, the Koreans really truly do excel. Now we have covered a lot, but there is still a lot left to be said so that you can make a decision if an EV is in fact a car for you or you should go for the hybrid. So that's gonna come in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next part. Bye.